Welcome to the lesson energy flow in an ecosystem and this video will be only the notes of that lesson. Question 1. Complete the following table. Biogeochemical cycles and the biotic and abiotic processes that go on in these cycles. The very first one is the carbon cycle where we have photosynthesis of food making in plants, breathing or respiration in animals, decomposition in decomposers. The abiotic or non-living processes are absorption in water, burning of wood and fossil fuels, forest fires and volcanic activity. The second biogeochemical cycle is the oxygen cycle. The living processes or the biotic processes are respiration in plants and animals, oxygen production in plants, decomposition by decomposers. The abiotic processes are combustion or burning, corrosion, rusting. The third cycle is the nitrogen cycle. The biotic processes are nitrogen fixation by bacteria and ammonification by decomposers. The abiotic processes are nitrification and denitrification. Question 2. Correct and rewrite the following statements and justify your corrections. So a statement is given to you. You have to correct that wrong statement, rewrite it and then say why the statement is wrong. First one. Carnivores occupy the second tropic level in the food chain. Corrected statement. Carnivores occupy the third tropic level in the food chain. Producers of plants occupy the first tropic level. Herbivores eat plants and theref therefore occupy the second tropic level. Carnivores eat herbivores and so they occupy the third level, tropic level in the food chain. The second one, the flow of nutrients in an ecosystem is considered to be one-way transport. Corrected statement, the flow of nutrients in an ecosystem is considered to be cyclical. Nutrients are continuously transferred from biotic to abiotic factors and vice versa within an ecosystem. This cycle takes place within the biosphere, which is made up of the atmosphere, lithosphere, hydrosphere. Hence, the flow of nutrients in an ecosystem is said to be cyclical. Now, here nutrients are continuously transferred from biotic to abiotic factors. That means from the living to non-living and vice versa means non-living to living within an ecosystem. Third sentence, plants in an ecosystem are called primary consumers. Corrected statement, plants in an ecosystem are called producers because plants produce their own food by the process of synthesis and therefore are called producers. So the process of photosynthesis using the energy from the sun, carbon dioxide, water, chlorophyll, green pigment in the leaves and the formation of food in the form of the sugar glucose. During this process, oxygen is released. Question, give reasons. First one, energy flow through an ecosystem is one way. The sun is the most important source of energy in the ecosystem. During photosynthesis, green plants store some solar energy in the form of food. This stored solar energy is passed from one tropic level to the next and finally reaches the decomposers. Decomposers release some energy in the form of heat but no part of this energy goes back to the sun 
Hence, we say that energy flow through an ecosystem is one way. That energy which reaches from the plants right up to the apex consumer never goes back to the sun and therefore it is called one way. The second question, equilibrium is necessary in the various biogeochemical cycles. When there is a balance between the cycle of elements in the biosphere, equilibrium between the biogeochemical cycles occurs. Equilibri equilibrium meaning balance or stability. Human activities and climatic changes affect the speed, intensity, an equilibrium or balance of these cycles. Equilibrium of these cycles is very necessary for the continued survival and existence of organisms and for the stability of the environment. Third question, flow of nutrients through an ecosystem is cyclic. Nutrients are continuously transferred from biotic to abiotic factors and vice versa within an ecosystem. The food produced by producers is consumed by consumers. Nutrients are therefore now transferred from producers to consumers in the different tropic levels of the food chain. After the death of organisms, decomposers help to return the nutrients to the soil in a simpler form. These nutrients are absorbed by the plants and incorporated back into the food chain. Hence, we say the flow of nutrients through an ecosystem is cyclic. Explain the following cycles in your own words giving suitable examples. First one is the carbon cycle. By photosynthesis and respiration, abiotic or non-living carbon is recycled and circulated into the biotic form. By photosynthesis, plants convert carbon dioxide into carbohydrates. They also produce proteins and fats. Herbivores eat plants and in this manner, the biotic carbon now is transferred to herbivores to all consumers in the tropic level. Herbivores, carnivores and apex consumers release carbon dioxide into the air through breathing or respiration. Dead organisms are decomposed by decomposers and carbon dioxide is released again into the atmosphere to be used by living organisms. Carbon dioxide is also released into the atmosphere through abiotic processes like burning of fossil fuel and wood, forest fires and volcanic activity. In this way, carbon is continuously circulated in the atmosphere and this is the carbon cycle. The definition, the circulation and recycling of carbon from the atmosphere to living organisms and after their death, back to the atmosphere is called the carbon cycle. And this is the figure of the carbon cycle that is to be drawn by you. The second one, oxygen cycle. The oxygen cycle has biotic and abiotic components. It is continuously produced and used in the atmosphere. Animals, also human beings, use the oxygen released by plants for respiration and they release carbon dioxide back into the atmosphere. The released carbon dioxide is used by plants for photosynthesis. Oxygen is also used for processes like combustion or burning, decomposition, corrosion, rusting, etc. As oxygen is very reactive, it reacts with other elements and compounds. Oxygen is found as molecular oxygen or O2 
water or H2O, carbon dioxide or CO2, inorganic compounds, etc. The oxygen cycle of the biosphere is extremely complex. The definition, the circulation and recycling of oxygen within the biosphere is called the oxygen cycle. And this is the diagram that you need to draw. The next cycle is the nitrogen cycle. Nitrogen is inactive and does not readily combine with other elements like oxygen. Important processes in the nitrogen cycle. Nitrogen fixation where nitrogen is converted into nitrates and nitrites through atmospheric, industrial and biological processes. Ammonification where ammonia is released by the decomposition of dead bodies and excretory waste of organisms. Nitrification where ammonia is converted into nitrite and then into nitrate. And denitrification is the conversion of nitrogen compounds into gaseous nitrogen. Definition, the circulation and recycling of nitrogen gas into the form of different compounds through biotic and abiotic processes occurring in nature is called the nitrogen cycle. And this is the diagram that you need to draw. Also, if you need to, you can write the definition before you start explaining each cycle. Fifth question, what would you do to help maintain the equilibrium or the balance in the various biogeochemical cycles? Explain in brief. A biogeochemical cycle includes the flow of nutrients within the system, nutrients or matter. Human activities and climatic changes affect the speed, intensity and equilibrium of these cycles. To maintain this balance or equilibrium, we must avoid the release of harmful chemicals in water bodies like lakes, rivers and minimize the use of private vehicles in order to reduce water and air pollution. Trees should be planted to maintain this balance or equilibrium. Unnecessary deforestation or cutting of trees should be avoided. Sixth question, explain in detail the interrelationship between the food chain and food web. A definite sequence in the interaction between producers, consumers and saprophytes, those who live on dead decayed matter, is called a food chain. Each food chain consists of four or five more links. This is a food chain that, a simple food chain that you know about, where you have grass eaten by the grasshopper, who is a primary consumer, and then the snake who is a secondary consumer, the hawk who is a tertiary consumer eats the snake. When the hawk dies, then decomposes, acts upon its body and sends the nutrients back to the soil, which is again taken up by plants. Okay, So this is a food chain. For example, an insect, feed, an insect feeds upon leaves of plants, but at the same time, the insect is the food of the frog, the frog is the prey for the snake, and the snake is the prey for the cat, kite or the hawk. Okay. Now, butterflies can also eat leaves, the butterfly can also be eaten by the frog, and the frog can be eaten by the hawk. An ecosystem consists of many such food chains which are interconnected at various levels forming a complex intricate web. 
this kind of a network of so many interconnected food chains is called a food web question state the different types of biogeochemical cycles and explain their importance the types of biogeochemical cycles are as follows gaseous cycles and sedimentary cycles an accumulation of the main abiotic gaseous nutrient materials found in the earth's atmosphere is the gaseous cycle it includes the nitrogen oxygen carbon dioxide water vapor etc whereas an accumulation of the main abiotic nut nutrients found in soil sediment and rocks of the earth is known as a sedimentary cycle and it includes components like iron calcium phosphorus etc biogeochemical cycles are important for the transformation of matter or nutrients in from one form to another form so that it becomes available for all the different organisms in the food chain or in the ecosystem these nutrients are necessary for the growth of all organisms question explain the following with suitable examples first question what type of changes occur in the amount of energy during its transfer from plants to apex consumers now producers of plants store some solar energy in the form of food this stored energy is passed on from one tropic level to the next as this energy moves from one tropic level to the next some of it is lost in the form of heat apex consumers occupy the third tropic level and hence the amount of energy decreases during the transfer from plants to apex consumers what are the differences between flow of matter and flow of energy in an ecosystem why flow of matter or nutrients in an ecosystem is cyclic whereas the flow of energy in an ecosystem is one way transport all organisms need nutrients or matter for growth which are con continuously transferred from biotic to abiotic factors vice versa within an ecosystem this is a cyclic movement during the flow of energy no part of this energy ever returns to the sun thus the flow of energy is said to be one way transport in this video i have tried to give my voice as well as notes to you together i hope it is an improvement from just reading the textbook and trying to write your notes please post your comments so that i can know that this attempt has been an improvement or not okay now this is a desert ecosystem and here we have a mangrove ecosystem